And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifest the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation of our sin or the atonement for our sin. Let us pray. Father, my prayer is this morning, God, that you would just let thy spirit move freely upon our hearts. What a blessing it has already been this morning as we looked at the life of Hosea and the love that he showed toward his unfaithful wife and how that it shows how you love us even when we are unlovable. Today I pray, God, that thy will be done in this message and you touch our hearts. And we'll be so careful to give you praise, honor, and glory for these things I do ask in thy name. Amen. And amen, you may be seated. This morning I want to take just a moment, if I may, and bring the message to you on the love of God. In our text, our text starts out with the greatest commandment that was ever given to man. And that is that we love one another. Jesus Christ was very passionate about this love. Jesus Christ encouraged us on more than one occasion that we were to love one another. I said this morning that love will make the difference when nothing else can and nothing else will. If we only learn to love one another as God loved us, folks, it will make a difference in our community, in our family, and yes, in our church. I said this morning, I'll say it again, that I believe without a doubt, I feel the love that's in this church. If I did not feel it, I wouldn't want to be a part of it. I want to be where love is. Amen? I want to be where one another loves one another and not feud and fight with one another. Oh, I've been there. I say, I've been in the congregation where one side didn't care much for the other side and and, and vice versa, and many a times it caused such a split and a division in the church. But I'm here to tell you that the only way to deal with something like that is through the love of God. That precious love of God. For God is love, and God is of love, according to the scripture. Our greatest example was the love that God gave to man. God committed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What a, what a blessing to know this morning. What an encouragement to know that he loved you and he loved me way before the foundation of this world. He already had a plan set in place. That if man just would simply come and call upon my name, I will love him and I will forgive him. What a great blessing. Whenever we are unlovable, God loves us. Whenever we are undeserving, God loves us. Whenever we are rotten to the core, thank God he still loves us. I, want, I wonder... Have we come to the place in society that love is just another byword? Or is it a word that is used without feeling and without meaning? Have we come to the point where we say, I love you, just to say it with nothing behind it? Church, I want you to understand I don't tell people I love them unless it is of a truth. I will tell you, I pastored a church one time and never one time could I tell that church I love them. You say, why is that? For some reason it just wasn't there. 
I've tried to pastor the church. I've tried to minister the church. But without the love of God, I became, as the scripture speaks of, as sounding brass and tickling cymbals. I was going through the motions. I was going through the, the, through the, the, through the thing, but it wasn't love. I've told this church, and I will continue to tell this church that I love them. Why? Because I mean it. I mean it deeply in my heart that I love you. As a pastor can love his church. Have we come to that part in society? I believe that if we were ever in a time in this period of time, that we needed a religion that loved, had a love for country and a love for home, a love for the lost, and a love for the church, and a love of God. It is now. That time is now. We need to have love, show love, and exercise love to all those in who we come in contact with because it's the only thing that's going to work. Jesus Christ, when he came to this world, like the old time preachers of the past, that them old surrogate preachers, like preacher Sheffy that would stand up on the bank and he would wait for a rider to come by the pathway and he would jump off that bank at a precise time and he would knock that man off his horse and he would straddle him and throw his fist up and he said, prepare to meet thy God. <laughs> if Jesus Christ would have came you and I and said, you got to get saved. You need to get saved. But you know what he did? He came with love in his heart. And he loved us. He loved all kinds. He loved all men. But does man know that? Does man know that God loves them? I say again, how can they if we don't tell them? Has this generation ever experienced the kind of love in which this Bible has conveyed within its pages? How can they until they experience and until we experience that true love of God? You know, if we do not preach with love, if we do not teach with love, if we do not share the scripture with love, we're only giving them words. We're only giving them thoughts. We're only giving them what we know to say. But without the love, how can they be drawn? Jesus Christ came and died for all mankind. That man will be drawn to him. He did it with love and out of love. With love. I'm talking about a love that can and that will and still forgive and cover man's sins. This world needs to know that. God is offering that love to all and to whosoever, and whosoever will accept it. I think about those that are going through some things this morning. Those who may be laying in a hospital bed, those who may be over at the nursing home or in a care center, those who are sitting at home right now that is dealing with something that they just cannot figure out, that man, the world has come crumbled around them. They need love like nobody's business. Who's going to take it to them? Who's going to share it? Who is going to go to them people and say, listen, God loves you. God cares about you. God knows what you're going through. God wants to help you. I'm here to tell you, God is that love. As I think of love, love is a universal language understood by all or most all creatures. Even in the animal kingdom of beast and, and little creatures that crawl upon the earth, you can see a display of love of some kind. Although animals don't have a soul like man, animals don't have a thought pattern in their mind that they need a God, but yet 
God puts love within them to love one another. I can't help but to look at a slug, a snail. Who in the world would ever love one? But they love one another. <laughs> Even a snail has better sense than most humans. That they will love one another. That's all God's asking us to do. With the love of God that he has put inside of us. Man's nature is to love and to be loved. Where a man fails in that area is in showing love and believe it or not, in accepting love. You know, sometimes people just don't know how to accept love. I know of a man that was not brought up in a loving family. And because he was not brought up in a loving family, he, he was brought up in a family situation where they, there was bitterness and, and hatred and arguing and, and fussing and something con con uh, continuously going on in the family. And he got into a family that love was shown. And he didn't even know how to accept it. He was bewildered. He was like a deer in headlights. Oh, what do I do? Somebody come up and hug him, and he's like stiff arm, like, what are they doing to me? That's the way this world is when it comes to the love of God. When God comes to them with his love, and they're like, I don't know what to do. That's why God said for you and I to love one another. Because when they start experiencing that love, of God that we have in us and give to them. And then when God comes with the Holy Spirit and loves on them, their hearts are broken unto humbleness and they're willing to accept. Listen, man, man cannot comprehend, when he gets to where he cannot comprehend his own desires of love and, and, and or he cannot receive the love in which he is desiring he turns to its opposite. What is the opposite of love? Hate. Of course. So if he can't receive the love or comprehend the love, he sometimes turns over the other way. Hate, what evolves from hate is evil. Why is man so evil in this world? Why does man do what they do? Why does the, the pervert take uh, 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 their, their privilege with a child. Why does uh, an, a rapist take his uh, desires upon, uh, 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 upon the opposite sex? Why does, why does the, uh, the person that takes a gun and points it to someone's chest and pulls the trigger for a few bucks out of a cash register, why do they do that? It's because they lack love in their life and they have turned over to evil. Disobedience evolves from hate. Rebellion evolves from hate. Self-will evolves from hate. And that's why we are in the situation that we are in. But then there is when man needs a divine love to intercept his emotional state. What am I talking about? I'm talking about when God's love intervenes and steps in. That love is, oh, what a great love. What a wonderful love that is willing to forgive man of their sins. Forget about man's hate. Forget about man's evil. Forget about man's uh, disobedience and his rebellion as he did with the children of Israel time after time after time. He continued to love them regardlessly. God loves us that same way this morning. It's that, that love that I'm talking about is, is, is it takes more than just a natural love. It takes more than any love that man has ever known or ever experienced before whether it was the love that a man was with a woman or a woman with a man or a man with family or a man with friends it's a much stronger love it is a divine love we call it a agape love the love of God and it only comes from God one that will give a positive emotion 
and give a positive mental state in one's mind that he is being loved or she is being loved and therefore it comes from that higher power then they therefore can be overtaken with that love. I'm so grateful and thankful that the love of God is able to overcome anything in your life. You look and you say, how can God love certain people in this world that do certain things, that act certain ways, that says certain things, uh, that, that go off and do? Listen, God has a way of loving them with that agape love that they can't even understand themselves. But when it takes place, it changes the entire complex of a person. That's what God does for you and I. I believe that love will create good habits and produce a deep affection for a better life. We'll have a desire that we'll want to do better. We want to change our life. We want to change our lifestyle. We want to get away from the things that have caused so much to come in our life. And we want to get close to something where love is. That's why it's important, church, that you and I love one another and that you and I have the love in this church so that when someone comes through that door, hey, if it's just for a visit or for them to pass through to go to the restroom, that as they come in, they say, wow, there's something here. And I need that. I need that love that I feel in my life. That, my friend, can only come from the love of God that God can give. John 15, 13 says, greater love, <laughs> greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Verse 14 says, ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Now there's that contingency church that I was talking about there in Sunday school. God told Israel, I love you freely. No strings attached. He's telling you and I today, I will love you if that contingency, if you do whatsoever I command you. So what is he saying? He said, I want to see some evidence of my love in your life. I want to see evidence of love in your church and I will I will love you as a friend if you will do what I command you to do verse 15 said henceforth I call you not servants he said I'm not going to call you my servants by rights he can by biblical theology we are but he says I will not call you servants he said, for the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth, but I have called you friend. Boy, it's been a blessing to know we have a friend in Jesus. Amen. And he loves yes. us so much that he's going to call us friend. I don't say this and don't say this to embarrass someone, but there's one particular gentleman in the church when I call him sometime, he'll say, well, hello, buddy. You say, well, now that's disrespect. You're the pastor. He should refer to you as the pastor. No. He's referring to me as a friend. You don't know what that means in my heart. And that I can in return love him as a friend because he says that. Note what God has done for you. He has chosen you. <laughs> He's chosen you to save you from your sins. He's chosen you to make you free from the life of this world. He has chosen to become a friend for life. He has chosen to make you a part of his family. He has chosen to prepare an eternal home for you. He has chosen to keep his promise that he will never leave you nor forsake you. And someday he will come back. Amen and take you home to be with him for eternity because he loves you. I don't know about you, but if he didn't love you, I don't think he would ever even attempt to do that. He has ordained you. Not only has he loved you, he, not only has he chosen you, he has ordained you. That 
We're ordained here, meaning that God has placed your name in his book. Never to be taken out. Never to be removed. That word ordained here, God has settled. Listen now. He has settled your account. Boy, I tell you, if you get a hold of that this morning, we might just stop and shout a lot. I said, he has settled your account. You're no longer under the bondage of sin that will have you destined to a devil's hell. He has settled your account, your sin debt, through the blood of Jesus Christ, has been paid. Hallelujah. He has appointed you. He has appointed you to his place. Hallelujah. All because of the love of God. He said, beloved, beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. He said, he that loveth Knoweth not God, for God is love. <clears throat> I'm thankful this morning that God has chosen to love me. And he has chosen to love you. Without the love of God, we have no chance whatsoever in this life. I am so grateful and I am so thankful for the love of God. Let us bow our heads this morning. Sister Tammy's going to make her way to the piano. She'll come on this morning. This morning I want you to understand that that love of God that I'm speaking of is not only available for those who may be lost, but is still available for those who are his. He wants to love you this morning. As she plays, we stand to our feet with our heads bowed and eyes closed. I wonder if you need to maybe come to this altar this morning or maybe one of these front pews. Just kind of claim that love this morning that you need for comfort to know that God is going to take care of the needs in your life. God's going to take care of the requests. And then maybe that you need just to ask God this morning, Lord, give me the love of God in my heart that I may love others that will make a difference in my life. We say that love covers a multitude of sin. Because whenever we love someone, we forget all about the sin of others. You need to claim it this morning. I invite you to pray. afternoon it's a six o'clock service as we take another look into God's word at another message I said without a doubt that today's message is on love my prayer is by the time you leave here tonight that you will know everything you need to know about love and that you are willing to go out and love and I do pray that will happen uh, but I encourage you to please pray for one another as we leave out this morning and come back and be with us this afternoon all right we're going to be closing and, and dismissed in a word of prayer and I would like to ask uh, Brother Danny, would you close us in a word of prayer, sir? Well, thank you for this time. Be with everyone here at church. Go with us, Lord, I pray. Watch over us, lead us, and guide us. Thank you for the message of preaching. Uh, do everything that you can. All these things we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Ladies, don't get.